Okay, welcome to podcast 2.1, and this is chapter 2, where we're looking at atoms and the atomic theory, and uh, the periodic table, actually. And before we can get into the atomic theory, this is objective 2.1 in your notes. Uh, we need to be looking at uh, some of these laws that kind of build the foundation for uh, the atomic theory. And the first one is the law of conservation of mass, and this says that no matter may be created or destroyed created or destroyed. So remember, atoms are matter. They're physical things. So we cannot make any out of nothing and we cannot, you know, squish them into oblivion. We can't destroy them. They have to go somewhere and they have to come from somewhere. Uh, the, uh, that also means that all the matter in the world today was here when it was formed, you know, billions and billions of years ago. It's just been recycled. The second law is the law of definite proportions, and this is based on the law of conservation of mass. And this says that compounds, okay, and we're going to define compounds in a minute. Compounds form in whole number ratios, whole number ratios. That means we cannot have like half of an atom as part of a compound. There has to be an entire atom forming or an entire compound forming from entire atoms. And these are chemical formulas that we see, like H2O or NaCl. This is table salt. You eat this every day, and you drink this every day. So compounds are always going to be in whole number ratios. And finally, the law of multiple proportions says that compounds, CMPD, compounds with the same atoms or the same elements, uh, they can form multiples for multiple compounds in whole number ratios. Oops, whole number ratios. And this one's a little hard to grasp. It still is based on the definite proportions uh, and it's based on the conservation of mass. So here's a quick example. Water is H2O. Hydrogen peroxide, like when you get a cut, is H2O2. We've got the same elements but we're changing our composition. So water as a compound is different than hydrogen peroxide. Notice hydrogen peroxide still forms in a whole number. I've got two hydrogens for two oxygens. Whereas in water, we've got two hydrogens for one oxygen. Always going to be a whole number. All of these laws, okay, laws one, two, and three, are based off of Dalton's atomic theory. So it, it scales. And his atomic theory had four ideas. The first one is that uh, all matter or all stuff is made of indestructible atoms. So I cannot destroy these atoms. I cannot break them. I can't rip them apart. Uh, and I can't take any and squish them into something new. I can combine them into new things, but I cannot take two and squeeze them into one. Uh, the second one is that elements Okay, like elements on the periodic table are the same type of atom. Same type of atom. So we don't have any mixtures. Uh, so a collection of sodium, all of those atoms are going to be exactly the same. A collection of carbon, the letter C, all of those atoms are going to be identical to one another. Uh, third is that compounds, CMPD for compounds, our combinations, our combos, of two or more atoms. So we can have compounds just like H2O. So I take two hydrogen and I mix them with an oxygen and that gives me the compound water. And this water is exactly the same no matter how it gets formed. And finally, chemical reactions. So chem, CHM, RXN is my little abbreviation for reactions. So chemical reactions are a rearrangement So we're just taking those atoms and rearranging them. So they're a rearrangement of atoms. So I've got atoms you know, in one place. I can take them and I can mix them up and recombine them into something new. And that's what a chemical reaction is. So all of these things combined give us the foundation for the rest of the atomic theory and the rest of the chapter.